It's like I said, uh, national parks, because they are so easy access uh, and because they belong to the environment, are usually under strong pressures. And most of the pressures are actually linked with human activities and uh, human encroachment. If we look at the canons, that's a very nice picture of what the canon looks like and how appealing is it to go there with your boat and anchor and spend the rest of the day. But how many boats are actually using the, the canon per day? How many boats are actually anchoring? Even though the regulation are actually now enforcing the no anchor policy within most of the Kalank, there's still a strong pressure on soft bottom and on the Posidonia Oceanica meadows. Posidonia are very emblematic seagrass from the Med Sea. They are very uh, beautiful and host a large biodiversity, but on the other hand, they are quite uh, fragile and you know, display a very slow growth. So no anchoring, so no damaging or the Posidonia is going to recease and that's a big issue. Once might, one might, might find that diving could be actually a nice way to promote the, the national park, which is true in one way. Because the more fish, the more crustacean and mollusk, and the more lively the, the underwater is, the more appealing is it for divers. Unfortunately, impact on gorgons and red coral and Posidonia meadows has been observed. How often is it tempting to touch uh, the substrate, which could actually result in breaking or damaging large substrate? So it's very important to uh, actually carefully uh, look at the increase in frequentation, increase and in release of chemicals from water, for example, the titanium-based product from sunscreen, and uh, actually get a good mapping of the spatial and temporal scales diving activities can actually uh, impact in the park. The same goes on land, impact on plants and animals, once you actually don't walk on the trails and get off trails and so on. And also the impact of invasive species both on land and in the ocean. The water is submitted to increase apparition of uh, invasive species and lately there have been a new one after the cholera that we've seen in the past couple tens of years. So there's a lot of uh, diving and snorkeling related uh, pressures that should be uh, carefully addressed. Fishing pressure is maybe most, more obvious and both professional and recreational fishing should actually be carefully uh, uh, um, regulated through a quantitative aspect but also to follow seasonal variation on the fish that actually found within the park. In that matter, the park has had issued a guide uh, showing which fish actually uh, should be carefully uh, uh, fished and uh, what are the size limit and so on. So it's uh, quite uh, easy to follow the guide and follow the rules. And on top of it, the, the park has mainly a uh, seven, eight no fishing zone, which are highlighted in that picture in dark blue. And uh, in those zones, you can't actually fish and other activities such as diving could be also uh, reglemented. So it's important and we'll see what the role of those no take zones are important in the actually uh, working process of the whole uh, park. Unfortunately, within the park, we can find also the sewage outflow from Marseille and several of uh, its surrounding uh, city. Eighteen different cities are actually uh, joining their uh, sewage 
through the outflow at court you. Even, even though that's a lot, a lot of effort, effort, sorry, a lot of effort has been put together to get the switch through uh, several uh, improvements from uh, doubling the number of emissary, uh, the implementation of the step physical chemical treatment in 1987, the biological treatment since 2008, and the uh, enlargement of the retention basin at uh, Michelet. And as you can see on the map on the bottom right, uh, the outflow of the sewage system in Marseille is right into the heart of the park. So even though it's far from uh, the main uh, beach of the Prado, uh, it's still very close from the city. And uh, seeing those large plumes of fresh water uh, could which sometimes could be charged with uh, particles, it's actually not really nice in a national park. And uh, as you can see on the top picture, the sewage is right there in the rock, right at the edge of the rock formation, and uh, is continuously uh, flowing fresh water into the ocean. And uh, if you look at the fish, and uh, the quality of the water, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's a bit less clear. And, but there are quite a lot of fish that are actually feeding onto the, the organic matter that could be uh, outflow from the sewage. And we can see very large congers and uh, other uh, crayfish that seems to be happy to live nearby the outflow. Are they good? I don't know. And the other threat uh, that's actually um, ending in the national park is the red or the red mud or the red sludge from Gardan and uh, Several regulations have been put in place to reduce the amount of uh, red matter from the uh, aluminium factory into the ocean. And now it seems that it's only uh, fresh water that has been released. But still, there have been years and years and years of red mud being dumped uh, just outside of Cassis, which is within the park. So actually, if we take every of those uh, stressors that I just presented um, separately, okay, we could deal with each, each of them, but actually pressures uh, are cumulative. And that's a map showing pressure, uh, cumulative pressure index within the Med Sea. And we can see on the right hand side that uh, the region of the Park is actually quite red, meaning that the, the indicate the pressure is quite high or very high. And uh, so, the cumulative value from each pressure uh, will impact differently uh, the different uh, uh, syst uh, uh, part of the system. And we can see in uh, dark uh, green. Uh, the Posidonia Senica seems to be impacted by most of the pressure. Uh, even fishing could impact uh, uh, the Posidonia by uh, fishing gears being lost or dredging over, over the Posidonia, even though it's completely forbidden. The park and NPAs are actually put together to improve the carrying capacities. By doing so, uh, it's to manage uh, and reach an estimation of optimum use, taking into account not only the ecosystem uh, well-being and uh, the quantity of fish that could be harvested, but also the economic value of the fish, uh, the quality of the environment, the number of impact, and such as. And with uh, two million visitors, 
the fisheries, the diving, the moorings, uh, all that has to be taken into account to address that carrying capacity. So it's, uh, it's always a, a trade-off of uh, how much value we want to get out of the park and how much we should put in to uh, make sure the park actually is working. Connectivity. Connectivity is one of the perks of a national park and the no tech zones that have been implemented will reduce the fishing on uh, several species and improve the stock of those fish. But by going in and out of the no tech zone, fish will actually expand the impact of the uh, uh, no tech zone and the whole a uh, national park will become a much nicer place to be and because the national park doesn't have border, fish and crustaceans and uh, other organisms can actually uh, go outside of the park and uh, start breeding and bringing more uh, organisms outside of the park. And uh, the other interesting thing is actually the connectivity within MPAs or national park. And by the will of increasing the number of uh, uh, protected areas along the French coast, we can improve that connectivity and uh, the, whatever it's working in one NPAs or in another one and on the third one and so on can actually bounce back from one to the next. And um, by uh, using those NPAs as a uh, uh, rebound system, we can improve the whole cost. So the lower dispersed zone is something, a key process, uh, not only for crustaceans like shown on that uh, figures, but also for fish and other organisms. Um, but as doing so, connectivity is not only linked to how we're going to uh, implement and take care of a national park. It's also uh, largely uh, under the influence of large currents, uh, like shown on that picture. So dealing with uh, numerical modeling will be helping us to understand the connectivity and the potential from one MPAs to actually uh, feed another protected region. And uh, such as uh, the, the current, the so winds, and we can end up with those very fancy uh, modeling to understand how the different species can actually be either kept within one MPS or otherwise being uh, moved away from the MPS and might enrich another uh, protected area. If we take the, the, the current uh, impact dispersal from the switch uh, at Cortu on the left uh, picture, we can see here the outflow and depending on the winds, if it comes from the east or if it's a mistral and so on, uh, we can have some of the water from the emissary of uh, Cortu to be brought back into the um, Bay of Marseille is a southern part or even the northern part. If we get uh, the wind from the north and uh, with the uh, Rhone River plume that could be around here, we can even see at some point some water coming from the Rhone coming into the bay. So the scale and uh, the, the, the wind direction, wind speed and the um, current distribution are very important to understand all that uh, dynamics around uh, the dispersion of species. So the changes or the um, prevailing winds will have a dramatic impl implication on the population persistence and also on the population dispersion. So protected area can yield uh, recruitment and sustainability uh, for crustaceans, for fish and maybe also for jellyfish. And uh, the scale of that uh, connectivity uh, can be up to 40k, so it can cover quite a large part of the, the Med Sea uh, French coast. And the scale and direction 
uh, across some of those areas are still unfortunately not known. So we still have some work to do.